Chapter 7. Bella ran away from Will on the street, and he chased her and caught her. She ran again. He chased and caught her again and again. This night was late summer and told of coming fall. It made the flowers that could not close up tremble, and children were on the streets playing hide-and-seek. They had one drink at the bar in the corner and walked back through the door held open by a rock down to a store on another corner and bought a Shivaz Southeast Australian Red 1997 and three packs of chocolate covered almonds and he chased her part of the way home where he keyed the wine and gave the cat the cork. They sat on the stone ledge of her balcony and got lost. He hid in the living room with his notebook and wrote. She pulled off his shirt and battled the knot in his back they nicknamed Hitler. How can people sit in front of television sets, Will? How can the Western world be, she demanded, increasing pressure between his shoulder blades. Snakes in Malaysian Buddhist temples soak in incense all fucking day, and after you die, before you were born. There are plenty of spiritual folk in the Western world, Bella, less practiced in the public sphere. The opposition of cultures is due to inherited opposed value systems considered elemental to survive and cannot be overturned. The small business versus the farm. It comes down to which beast you inherit. Do you walk outside every morning and look to the sky or to your feet to see if the walk needs sweeping or your shoes need a polish? But who can mistake fast food and couch parking for elements of survival? That's like saying, run into the highway and you will be saved. Fast food is inexpensive. Television, free entertainment. Survival in the Western world correlates with a dollar, you know. The reward system we've established in our culture focuses on leisure. Sitting on a couch, turning something off inside of you that was previously on. Yes, your brain zoning out. But what endears you to Eastern ways, Bella? I'm curious. I, too, am attracted to Eastern thought. I've never been there, but the images I've seen have painted a simpler, richer life. Yeah, but consider this. There might be an Indian girl like you whose desire is to someday make a fortune to feed her family. And the Western world is her best chance. She may have a picture of Wall Street on her wall. She may wonder how her people can sit in a room and stretch and pray, oblivious to the fortunes that could be made in the world. But she might not be aware of the pitfalls. Money can corrupt. In other words, distance renders things more beautiful than they really are up close. Now you're making sense. It's about time you made sense, Will. Bella was straddling him now and massaging his back, and he closed his eyes and envisioned her making love to him in a room painted purple with green swirls, her tattoos and ministry concert t-shirt colorfully black. They were so caught up, a candle's embedded hot stone casing burnt itself to the plastic snooze button of an alarm clock, embedded stone into time entirely, passed away in lovemaking. I may never get a nine to five, that's all, but I'm not gonna sit around wasting time. The grandchildren of the depression, our parents, seem to believe that not having a nine to five translates to a wasted life. Maybe they just need a new translation.